And we are kicking things off with the 3,000 year old arrow. This is a super recent discovery, just happened back in September. A glacial archaeologist named Espen Finstad was hiking through the Jotunheim Mountains in eastern Norway when he came across a wooden arrow. It was so well preserved that to the naked eye, it would probably look brand new. It even still had feathers on it. But Finstad estimated that this arrow was actually around 3,000 years old. He later determined it was likely used by a hunter in the late Stone Age to early Bronze Age. Finstad stated, what makes the arrow so impressive is its preservation. Though it is broken into three parts, the arrow remains attached to the shaft, as do the feathers known as fletchings which helped to stabilize the arrow's flight path. So this is just one of the many artifacts turning up uh, once frozen under you know, thick layers of ice, you know, not just in Norway, but in cold climates all around the world as glaciers continue to melt. If you are enjoying our content so far, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to leave your thoughts, uh, your comments, complaints down below. Uh, I'll usually read them. At number nine, we have Mummy Juanita. Mummy Juanita, also known as the Ice Maiden or Lady of Ampato, is an exceptionally well-preserved mummy of an Inca girl which was discovered in 1995. The mummy was found on Mount Ampato, a dormant volcano in the Andes Mountains of southern Peru, by anthropologist Johann Reinhard and his team. Mummy Juanita is believed to have lived during the Inca Empire, making her one of the best preserved ancient bodies ever found. She was approximately 12 to 14 years old at the time of her death. The mummy was found at an altitude of about 20,600 feet, and her discovery was kinda accidental. Reinhard and his team were actually on a mission to recover another Inca mummy when they stumbled on her in a crevice. She was wrapped in several layers of colorful textiles and buried with various offerings, including ceramic and metal objects, food items, and small statues. She was probably sacrificed as an offering to the Inca gods. The mummy is currently on display in the Catholic University of Santa Maria's Museum of Andean Sanctuaries in Peru. Uh, you know, so get over there immediately. Tap on her glass encasing and uh, tell her Uncle James said hello. First person in the comments to do that will receive a, a wink emoji from me and a $10 gift certificate to Walden Books. Number eight, the mammoth mummy. No, this is not a giant sized human mummy. That would be pretty awesome. This is pretty awesome too, but it's, it's a mummified woolly mammoth. In 2010, a team of Russian scientists found a well-preserved mammoth in Siberia, later named Yuka. She was a young mammoth, about six to eight years old, and lived around 39,000 years ago. Yuka's body, was in really good shape. Its body measured about two and a half meters in length and it was remarkably intact with her trunk, bones, some of her flesh, hair, and even eyes still preserved, making her one of the most well-preserved mammoth specimens ever found. It's pretty incredible to see, not that I've ever seen it uh, in person, but based on pictures and video that I have seen of it, uh, crazy how well-preserved it is. Finding a dinosaur in this condition would be absolutely unreal. Anyway, they think she might have fallen into a mud pit or drowned, which helped to uh, preserve her so well. People probably butchered her for meat as there were cut marks on her bones. Scientists studied her DNA to learn more about mammoths and their connection to modern elephants. Right now, Yuka is currently being held in Moscow. Next up, we have the Greenland Norse textiles. Uh, these textiles are a collection of ancient fragments discovered in 1921 in various archeological sites in Greenland. The textiles provided insights into the types of clothing and weaving techniques of the Norse settlers who lived in Greenland during the medieval period. The sites where these fabrics were found are part of the remnants of Norse settlements in Greenland, which thrived between the 10th and 15th centuries. Fabrics discovered include woolen garments and household items. They were remarkably well preserved due to the cold and dry climate of Greenland, which helped prevent decay. The textiles had a bunch of different weaving patterns, colors, and designs that reflected the skill and artistry of the Norse weavers back in the day. It's interesting to see what their clothing looked like beyond depictions of them in ancient artwork. These fabrics uh, have also been useful in understanding the challenges faced by the Norse settlers in Greenland and how they adapted to the harsh environment. 
<laughs> in our number six spot, we have Iron Age tunic. Apparently, as Norway's glaciers begin to melt, archaeologists are beginning to uncover a ridiculous amount of ancient treasures, and some say it is about 2,000 plus items to date. One of the most notable items, in my opinion, is some recovered clothing that was found. Honestly, not one item is better than the other. They all tell a story from the past and help us better understand how mountain populations lived. But still, I think it is so cool to see that they found some clothing that's approximately from 300 AD, an Iron Age tunic to be exact. That's not that old though compared to some of the other items that were found on this dig that were approximately 4,000 years old, but still, pretty cool. And one of the older items that was found is in our number five spot today, which is the walking stick. Now this item also is not as old as some of the throwing darts that were found, but it's so unique and cool that I had to put it on the list. It's not just any old walking stick. It's a walking stick with runic inscription. Whoa, so cool. I actually have rocks with ruins on them at home that I bought from like a new AG store and I love to look at them. Ruins are truly fascinating and quite beautiful. So I'm a big believer in symbology and the energy and power infused in symbols. So anyways, when I saw this recovered walking stick from the 11th century AD, I kind of freaked out and needed to share. In our number four spot, we have arrowheads. This is actually so cool. The entire video has been so fun to research, but finding this out was very interesting. I definitely need to go to museums more. I don't think I knew that I enjoyed history so much. Anyways, in 2003, a hiker was walking in a mountain pass near Sion, Switzerland, when he came across some treasures. Not gold, sadly, but what he found were items that are arguably way cooler from a Stone Age hunter from over 3,000 years ago. They were fragments of a bow, an arrow case, arrowheads, and leg coverings, all believed to be revealed due to the ice in the glaciers melting due to the rapidly changing climate. Pretty crazy. Imagine just going for a hike and discovering some ancient artifacts. I bet you there will never be a more interesting moment in your life. Although fine, the birth of your future child could be fairly special too. In our number three spot, we have the Viking whisks. Technically not considered ancient artifacts, but I thought this was cool and it needed an honorable mention. The melting of glaciers in Norway has actually revealed a lost mountain pass, and with it, hundreds of Viking artifacts have been discovered. The pass was discovered back in 2011, as ever since, the glaciers have continued to melt and more and more artifacts have been recovered. Covered. The archaeologists believe the pass was used from the Roman Iron Age 300 AD to the Viking Age 1000 AD. From horseshoes to sled fragments to wooden needles to wooden whisks, all kinds of artifacts have been recovered. One of the most unique items include a Viking mitten and a blue textile rug. Wow, imagine finding a rug frozen on a mountain. Also, it's just wild to think that the Vikings had rugs. All I can think of when I think of Vikings is war, so it's probably just me and my limited imagination due to my limited knowledge of history. In our number two spot, we have arrowheads. Over 100,000 artifacts were recently uncovered in a place called Nunalik in Alaska. These artifacts belong to the Yupik peoples who lived there. There have been stories told over many centuries of a gruesome massacre that occurred during the bow and arrow war days, which was a series of long, brutal battles. Up until recently, the area had been frozen in the subsoil known as permafrost. The most notable items that were found were the slate arrow points that further proved the stories that have been told about these war times. Although these items aren't technically ancient, they are truly a wonder for archaeologists to discover and I thought it needed to be on this list. In our number one spot, we have an ancient lunchbox. A 3,500 year old lunchbox was discovered in Switzerland in the Swiss Alps. No, it didn't have a 3,500 year old cheese sandwich in it, but it did have traces of ancient cereal. Whoa, some ancient dude was just walking around the Alps eating an ancient version of Lucky Charms. The lunchbox is a Bronze Age wooden container and apparently the food traces were of wheat and barley or rye grains. The lunchbox was made from Swiss pine and its rim was made from willow sewn together with European larch twigs. It was found in a melting ice patch in 2012. That's incredible. Probably my fave find on this list, but anything to do with 
with food just makes me excited. Excuse me as I go pour myself a bowl of Lucky Charms. Feel free to join me if you like. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have a tiny, creepy hand. This small, lifelike bronze hand was found at the Roman fort of Vindolanda, which is near Hadrian's Wall in England. This artifact was found by archaeologists, and it quickly became quite a mysterious find. The reason for this is because of the fact that it is believed that this artifact may have been associated with a cult. This cult, called Jupiter Dolichenus, after the Roman god, of course, is a mystery cult that held their secrets close to their chest. The secretive cult existed and was very popular with the Roman army around the 3rd century. This hand is believed to have been left as an offering after there was a major invasion of Scotland that left a large number of people dead. Little more about this bronze statue is known, and that just might make it even creepier. In our number 9 spot today, we have vampire remains. A few years ago in Poland, during a dig, researchers uncovered some skeletal remains that date back to the 14th century, and if this find wasn't already gruesome enough, they quickly figured out this wasn't where the story ended. These skeletons appeared to have posthumous injuries inflicted onto them. Wondering why? Someone's fear of vampires is probably to blame. The skeletons had been decapitated and punctured at the spine, which is extremely gruesome, and then the severed heads were wedged between heavy stones. This is what the lore at the time suggested was the appropriate actions for those who might be vampires in order to prevent them from rising from the dead again. As it turns out, as many of us now know, unfortunately, many of these people who were said to be supernatural or evil were probably just suffering from diseases of life. According to researchers, during this time period, people who were suffering from things like kyphosis or perhaps cholera were often thought of as being vampires or witches. In our number 8 spot today, we have Jerry Bibb Balasok's gravestone. This tombstone goes hand in hand with an absolutely insane story of Jerry's life. The story of it is that Jerry, who was a professional wrestler, ended up vanishing after getting in trouble with the law. He was wanted for charges of fraud, and while no one knew his whereabouts for six months, when his mother picked up a magazine one day which featured the victims of the horrible cultist Jonestown massacre, she sadly saw her son's picture alongside all of the others. This led to there being a tombstone, of course, made for Jerry, although his body would have already been buried in California. So this all happened in 1978, but let's flash forward to 1990. In that year, a man named Ricky A. Weta was arrested for attempting to take someone's life. He was fingerprinted upon his arrest, and who would have thought Ricky turned out to be none other than the presumed dead Jerry. The whole story was of course national news, because how could this have possibly happened? In the end, Jerry was caught and brought to justice. But here's the thing, the tombstone. It's a reminder of the Jonestown Massacre. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Vampire of Dusseldorf. If you've ever been to a Ripley Believe It or Not Museum, you know those places are stocked full of the weird and wonderful, and this item is absolutely no different. This Wisconsin museum holds the skull from the severed head of the vampire of Dusseldorf, Peter Carton. Who is Peter? Well, this vampire man was actually a German serial killer from the 1930s. This man committed some incredibly atrocious acts for which he was tried and convicted. He ended up being found guilty for the killing of nine people as well as attempting to take the life lives of seven more. This guilty verdict led to him being sentenced to beheading, which took place in 1931 when Peter was 48 years old. I'm not exactly sure why anyone would have wanted to keep his head and skull around, but clearly it happened and now people can go and visit it whenever they feel like it. This might be one museum I might stay away from to be perfectly honest. I've learned about way too many cursed items here and don't want to mess around with this one. In our number 6 spot today we have this viking sword. Archaeologists found a Viking sword called Ulfbear that they were able to date somewhere from 800 to 1000 AD, but upon further research, they were absolutely astounded at what they found. This sword was made with a level of sophistication that wasn't seen until at least 800 years later. The carbon content of the sword is three times higher than other swords of the time, and due to the impurities that were removed, the iron ore would have needed to be heated to at least 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
This sword was so hard to believe to researchers that a blacksmith named Richard Furrer made a sword similar to this one and used technology that would have been available at the time of its making. He said that the process was the most complicated thing he had ever made, and he even ended up using methods that weren't known to be used at the time. This is all super cool and stuff, but it has me wondering what this sword was used for and what dark parts of history it holds. In at number six, we have the Kostenki 17 artifacts. The Kostenki 17 artifacts were discovered at the Kostenki site in Russia, an archaeological site known for its wealth of Upper Paleolithic finds. The artifacts discovered at the site include bone and antler tools, bone ornaments, and various artifacts made from organic materials. Archaeologists dug up a number of bone and antler tools like spear points, knives, and needles, tools that had been crafted with remarkable precision. They also found ornaments made from bone like beads and pendants. On top of that, there were plenty of hunting tools like projectile points along with bones of animals that they had hunted. Some other notable discoveries at the site were engraved objects and fragments. These engravings often depict animals in geometric uh, patterns, showcasing the type of artwork they would have made at the time. At our number five spot, we have the Siberian Ice Maiden, also known as the Princess of Ukok or the Altai Princess. This is a mummy of a young woman that was discovered in 1993 in the Ukok Plateau of the Altai Mountains in Siberia. The Siberian Ice Maiden was discovered by Russian archaeologist Natalia Palasmak in a tomb on the Ukok Plateau. The site was located in an altitude about 8,200 feet. The mummy is believed to date back to around 500 BC, making her approximately 2,500 years old. The mummy was found in a wooden sarcophagus covered with felt blankets and a cowhide rug. She was dressed in intricately woven garments made of wool and felt that was also adorned with jewelry, you know, earrings and necklace, various ornaments made of gold and other precious metal. So it's likely she held a high social status within the community. Her burial seemed to have been part of a complex ritual too, which led the archaeologists to believe she could have been a priestess or a noblewoman. Number four, the Etherican Brown Bear. 2019, scientists uh, made a pretty cool discovery in Siberia. A thousands year old brown bear carcass preserved in the permafrost. The ancient brown bear carcass was discovered by reindeer herders. It was incredibly well preserved because of the permafrost conditions which prevented decay. The carcass dates back approximately 3,500 years, placing it in the late Bronze Age. This age estimation was made through radiocarbon dating, a technique used to determine the age of organic materials based on their content of carbon-14 isotopes. Next on the list is Quede Dan Shinichi, which was the name given to a remarkably well-preserved body discovered the Tachanshini Alaska Provincial Park in British Columbia, Canada. Quede Dan Shinichi was discovered by hunters in the remote wilderness northwestern British Columbia. The body was found partially buried in the ice, surrounded by a variety of artifacts. He was believed to have lived over 550 years ago, around the early 15th century, a member of one of the indigenous tribes that inhabited the region during that time. The body's preservation was due to the glacier ice, which acted as a natural freezer, protecting the remains from decomposition. And along with the body, again, a variety of artifacts were discovered. There was a robe made from animal hides, a spruce root hat, a woven mat, a walking stick, various tools made from stone and bone. The body was then ceremonially reburied in 2000, following traditional rituals and protocols. Coming in at number two, we have the Landbreen tunic. In 2011, during archaeological excavations in Landbreen, Norway, this ancient piece of clothing was discovered. The tunic was a remarkable archaeological find, revealing more information about ancient Norse clothing and textile techniques. The Landbreen site in the mountains of Norway was once frequented by travelers during the Roman Iron Age, approximately 300 to 500 AD. Because of the ice and snow in the region, many artifacts, including textiles, have been incredibly well preserved. And the tunic, it's made of wool, dates back to around 230. AD. It's a tunic style garment with a natural brown color, a simple design. It has a twill weave, a pattern commonly used in textiles in that era. Just think of how much of our clothing, by the way, 
is gonna be left behind after we eventually leave Earth or go extinct, let alone all our other crap. We churn out so much stuff on a constant basis, more so than at any point in history. I think finding stuff from this era is gonna be so common in the future that it'll be more of a nuisance rather than a remarkable find. Finally though, taking that number one spot is Otzi the Iceman. Now, why is this number one? I don't know, not really any particular ranking going on here, just uh, a good one to close off with. In September of 1991, hikers Helmut and Erika Simon stumbled upon a well-preserved human corpse high in the Alps near the border of Austria and Italy. Later known as Otzi the Iceman, the two hikers saw the remains and actually thought he could have died relatively recently. But no, Otzi was an ancient human who had lived over 5,000 years ago during the late Neolithic period. He was so well preserved because he'd been encased in ice for that thousands and thousands of years. His body was found in the Otzel Alps. The discovery site was in the Schnalzalval Sinalis Valley, a region that was once covered by glaciers completely. Scientists discovered that Otzi lived between 3359 and 3105 BCE, making him one of the oldest and most well preserved naturally mummified humans ever found. He was five foot five and weighed around 110 pounds. The age at the time of his death was estimated to be around 45 years old. Besides his body, researchers also found a bunch of artifacts and clothing items with him. A copper axe, a quiver of arrows, a bearskin cap, and a coat made of woven grass and hide. Otzi's remains and belongings are currently housed in the South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology in Balzano, Italy. And number 10. Ancient Egyptian power tools. We all know how smart the ancient Egyptians must have been, but with their pyramids we couldn't even recreate today if we tried. But with this recent discovery, it seems like these dudes were more technologically advanced than we could have possibly imagined. So this researcher Christopher Dunn was basically Sherlock's homing his way through the remnants of the pyramids, looking at how the ancient builders must have made their stuff, and what he found was seriously mind-boggling. But to the untrained eye, it seems pretty innocuous. Just a simple ribbed core which would have been drilled out from the limestone and discarded during the pyramid's creation. Now those grooves you see when something's been cut. Now, now Dunn noticed these grooves on the sarcophagus in the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid, but they weren't just any grooves, they were similar to what our modern band saws make. See the thing is, the distance between these grooves were teeny teeny tiny, about 0 .05 of an inch. It's like trying to fit an ant between them. Now, nowadays, for us to get those marks, our tools would need to move way slower, but there's more. See, those ancient Egyptians weren't just good at grooving. They were drilling into granite like it was a piece of cake. The drilling technique, which was thought of as trepanning, left behind cores. Now, here's the mind-blowing part. Their drill went into the rock at a crazy rate of 0.1 inch per spin. Today, even with our modern diamond drills spinning at 900 revolutions per minute, we can only manage about 0.0002 inches per spin. It's a whopping 500 times slower than what the ancient Egyptian builders were doing. This means that the Egyptians had access to drilling tools that are more sophisticated than today's technology would allow. So either those dudes back then are smarter than we are, or they were assisted by time travelers from the future. Or both. Probably both. At number nine is this 1.8 billion year old nuclear reactor. One, so almost two billion years ago, that's billion with a B, when humans weren't even a thought, let alone a species, there might have been a nuclear reactor just chilling in Gabon, Africa pretty crazy. In the 70s, these French cats bought some uranium back from there, thinking it was just regular stuff, but as it turns out, it had already been activated and mined. Cue the detective music. Now, scientists went Sherlock on this and found out that this place used to be a full-blown nuclear reactor for 500,000 years. And here's where it gets even nuttier. Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, a big shot in nuclear science, like I'm talking Nobel Prize winning level over here. He said, hold up, this nuclear reactor can't be a natural formation. Why? Because for uranium to go nuclear, it needs conditions so picky you would think it was a diva. The water needs to be insanely clean, like 
way cleaner than usual. Plus, there's this special isotope called U-235 that's crucial for the party to start. The uranium-235 isotope levels here were just not enough for a natural nuclear rave. The U-235 levels found in this ancient reactor weren't actually high enough to kickstart this atomic party, so think about it. A nuclear reactor before humanity was even a thing. Time travel vibes or what? This artifact throws textbooks out the window. If you're enjoying this video so far, please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. Number eight, this 2.8 billion year old sphere. It's even older than the reactor. So imagine stumbling upon these tiny round things in, South, in a South African mine, thinking that they're just kind of cute little rocks. But no, some folks argue that they might be the ultimate proof that time travel is real. Known as the Clark's Drop Spheres are like celebrities of the geology world. People debate whether or not they're natural or handmade by ancient humans. Now here's the kicker. Well, it wouldn't be ancient humans because it's far older than our species. But here's the kicker. These guys have neat grooves on their surface and they're tougher than tough. Not even being able to be scratched with steel pretty wild, kind of makes you wonder how those grooves were even put there in the first place. These spheres are older than old, like 2.8 billion years ancient, which is super mind-boggling. But here's where the mystery deepens. See, nobody's really sure how these things were formed. Some say they're formed by nature, but those grooves in that hardness, it's a really tough nut to crack. Now, this debate is huge. If these spheres were made by prehistoric monkey people back in ancient times, it's a game changer for the history books. But if nature is the artist here, well, it's one tricky piece of Earth's history's puzzle that we're still trying to figure out. These spheres might hold the key to unlocking some incredible secrets of our past. At number seven are the 150,000 year old pipes. Pipes, yeah, like the ones for plumbing, just chilling in this cave that dates back 150,000 years. That's way before our great, 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 great grandparents were even a twinkle in somebody's eye. And even way before the ancient Romans figured out how plumbing works. But here's the kicker. When experts took a closer look at these pipes, they found something mind-boggling. About 8% of the material used to make these pipes couldn't be identified whatsoever. It's like trying to figure out what's in a secret sauce recipe, but may more mystery involved. But there's more! These pipes aren't your run-of-the-mill kind. They're actually a bit on the radioactive side. Yeah, pipes that emit radioactivity kind of wonders what, kind of makes you wonder what the people putting through those pipes. Some, kind of makes you wonder what was in their diet. Uh, <laughs> now this isn't your everyday plumbing material. A geology expert thinks that maybe these pipes were formed when super hot stuff from way down in the Earth's belly rose up and solidified into tubes, which sounds plausible, but even this, but even this expert scratched their head and admitted that there's something pretty strange going on here. So these pipes could be the breadcrumbs hinting at the possibility of time travel being more than just a sci-fi dream. They're like a sneak peek into a world we thought only existed in wild sci-fi movies, but hey, the mystery remains unsolved. At number six, the glorification of the Eucharist from the late 16th century. Ventura selling Benny's painting in the church of St. Peter Montalcino. It's in Italy. It's a head scratcher for sure. Imagine this, the experts, all knowledgeable about art history, were trying to explain this weird spherical thing in the painting that's what's supposed to be a creation globe, and the wand-like objects that are being held by Jesus Christ and God are symbols of divine power, but here's where it gets really interesting. Have you guys ever heard of Sputnik? That was the very first satellite sent into space by the Soviets way back in 57. Now picture this. There's a replica of Sputnik sitting pretty in the National Air and Space Museum, and when you get the painting and the Sputnik and you put them side by side, they're literally twins, separated by centuries. Same size, same shine, even down to the little prong. Now, some folks entertain the wild idea that maybe Sputnik did a quick time travel stint swinging back to the 16th century. Others, though, they lean towards the UFO theory. Yeah, thing in the painting might just be a unidentified flying object. But here's the kicker. The mystery remains unsolved. Is this due to time travel? Is it UFOs? Jury's still out on this one, waiting for a Sherlock Holmes of the art world to crack open this case. Time travel? Maybe. UFOs? 
possibly. In our number five spot today, we have shackled skeletons. On an archaeological dig in 2016, researchers uncovered a scary site. Buried in the grounds in Athens, Greece, were at least 80 skeletons, all arranged in neat rows, all with iron shackles on their wrists. Stella Chrysalaki, who is the head of the excavation site, said, quote, They're all tied at the hands with handcuffs, and most of them are very, very young and in a very good state of health when they were executed. This definitely adds a little bit of horror to this already gruesome scene. Apparently, the method of burial suggests that whoever these skeletons belong to weren't just the average run-of-the-mill lawbreakers, and they may have been in trouble for some more serious crimes. It is believed that these skeletons might be the supporters of a man named Cylon. In 632 BC, Cylon, who was a former athlete, led an attempted coup in Athens. Of course, since I just called it attempted, it didn't work out, but apparently he then fled the city unharmed. Armed. Since he couldn't be punished for his crimes, that only leaves these souls who were just finally uncovered a few years ago. I know these are people who once lived and not artifacts, but I had to put them on this list today because this discovery and story are just something we have to be talking about. In our number four spot today, we have the Skurid Inn Beam. The Skurid Inn in Wales, upon first glance, just looks like a great place to enjoy some classic pub fare, maybe some fish and chips and a nice ale, but the history it holds tells a very different different story because this used to be a place for public hangings. Seems like a weird spot for a pub now, doesn't it? The upper part of the inn used to be the courthouse where people were tried and convicted, and then if the case was made, they were executed on site. It is estimated that around 180 hangings took place right in that spot. They even made the weird decision to keep the original hanging beam up, and the grooves of where the rope wore into the wood can still be seen even to this day. Also, the inn has chosen to keep the original cells where the prisoners were kept just to add the maximum amount of creepiness to the entire place. It's probably haunted as well. This beam serves as a reminder of a different time, I guess, but if we're being totally honest, have things really changed all that much? In our number three spot today, we have these sacrificial offerings. In 2018, researchers sent some remote operated robots beneath the ground in Peru at Chavin de Juan Tar. These robots stumbled on more than anyone ever imagined when they found a network of 35 interlocked underground tunnels dating back 3,000 years. This is already fascinating and cool, and I have a ton of questions about this whole series of mysterious tunnels, but we've got to save that for another video and instead talk about what it was they found inside of these tunnels, and that is the remains of at least three individuals. They had found more remains of other people, but these three skeletons specifically stood out because they weren't like the others. They weren't the skeletons of people who had high social standings. These remains they found were from people who were actually sacrificed in rituals. They were able to determine this because of the fact that these bodies were found face down under piles of rocks, which is of course course, not how people of a high social standing would have been buried at the time. This discovery certainly is a reminder of different times on Earth. In our number two spot today, we have an executioner axe. In a Swedish museum, there is an axe that dates back to between 1770 and 1866. This axe isn't just any old axe, however, as it once belonged to an executioner who used it on 88 people. Execution by axe, as you can imagine, was a lot more difficult in reality than movies make it seem, so these axes were specially designed. Rather than being a finely tuned piece of weaponry, these axes were simply designed to crush their way through flesh and vertebrae. I'll save you any more horrible descriptions and just say that the executioner didn't have an easy job for a variety of reasons, and it certainly was a job that required them to stay in great shape. Like I mentioned with the Skurid in beam, it's definitely good that things have changed since the days of public beheadings for capital punishment, but sometimes things don't really even seem all all that different. In our number one spot today, we have the Tower of Skulls. There's a city in Serbia that has an interesting tourist attraction. This tower dates back to a time when Serbia was still under Ottoman control in 1809. The first Serbian uprising was not going well, but the leader of the rebels, Stephen Sindelic, was determined to do something to change that. During the final stand at Sigar Hill, Stephen fired
fired a round into a keg of gunpowder, which was inside of a fully stocked armory. You can only guess what this did. Of course, it caused a massive explosion that killed not only him and his men, but also all of the Turkish soldiers who were storming the trenches. In order to get their revenge on this move that Stephen made, the Turks then collected all of the rebels' bodies and removed their heads. They took the bodies of 952 rebels and sent them to Constantinople as trophies. And what did they do with the heads? Well, they built a tower, of course. This tower was 15 feet high and the Turks built it right at the entrance to town. The skull tower was intended to be a reminder to not mess with them, but the Serbians decided to use their new metal as heck skull tower to show them what they were really made of. Coming in at number 10, we have the Ulfbert swords. Imagine if Excalibur was real and it wasn't just a story after all. Here at number 10, we have swords that are so powerful, they still have experts baffled. When you think of medieval Evil times, you probably picture a bunch of people carrying cool broadswords everywhere. But in reality, swords were actually incredibly expensive to have made, even around this time. Anywhere between 1200 to 24 grand in today's currency for one sword. And that's just for a pretty good sword. For a really good sword, well, get ready to sell your soul, man. The Ulfbert swords were the strongest, sharpest, and most flexible swords ever made, though no one really knows who made them, except maybe a guy named Ulfbert, but there's no record of him. Primarily associated with Vikings, researchers speculate that the swords were made in the Kingdom of Francia. The Kingdom of Francia, now France and Germany. These suckers could even cut through chain mail and were the perfect blend of materials. The process for combining the materials required a 1600 degree Celsius oven, which was not only hot enough to melt the metals, but also helped draw out any impurities. However, here's where things get weird. The process couldn't be replicated until the industrial era after the sword stopped production after 200 years. So how could they have been made before that? No one knows who began it and who carried on the tradition, but the blade still remains some of the finest ever made in history. Coming in at number 9, we have Stonehenge. Located in Wiltshire, England, the Stonehenge is one of UK's most famous landmarks. It consists of a bunch of standing stones in a ring, with some stones placed on top of each other. It's said to have taken 1,500 years to build this. It was built around 5,000 to 4,000 years ago. Some stones are 30 feet tall and weigh 25 tons. The smallest stones weigh about 4 tons. So how the heck did these people manage to build this big structure? That is something we still don't have the answers to. It's not like they had the machinery back then to help them. So how did they move these hefty rocks and then get them on top of each other? Did they possess super human strength or what? Not only that, but we don't know why they were built. Some believe that it was part of a burial ground. Others think that it was part of ritual activities, but we still don't know for sure. And unless a builder comes back from the dead to tell us, I doubt we'll ever figure out what the purpose behind Stonehenge is. Coming in at number 8, we have the Dropa Stones. I honestly love how many times I get to talk about potential alien stuff on this channel. In 1938, 716 12,000 year old circular disks were discovered in a cave between the border of China and Tibet. About one foot in diameter, the disks allegedly told the story of an alien ship crash landing and that the ship contained the Dropa people. Near the site, Dr. Chi Putai also found tiny skeleton bodies with larger than normal heads, like they were kind of like oval and shaped. Though no photos or documentation to prove that that part exists. The discs were stored in Beijing University for two decades before they were released to be studied, and one researcher was the one to decipher the extraterrestrial tale in just four years. However, after the stones were taken down after the exhibition, they haven't been seen since. Many say they are still at the university, while others speculate whether they existed at all. Some, however, were sent to Russia to be studied, where part of their studies included placing the discs on a turntable. The discs appeared to hum, but any further details on what they found still remain a mystery. In our seventh spot, we have the Petrodox. This next artifact is quite strange and might have been made by aliens. Let me explain. So back in 1998, a man named John J. Williams discovered something quite strange. He was out hiking in North America when he saw this thing sticking out of the ground. It looked as if it was an electrical connector. When he unearthed it, he discovered that this device was embedded into a rock. The rock has three metallic prongs just sticking out of it, and it wasn't glued or welded into the rock, leading researchers to believe that it existed while the rock was forming. 
But here's the thing, research shows that the rock is 100,000 years old. Back then, we didn't have electrical components like that, so what the heck? Now, Williams won't let anyone break into the object to further analyze it, but x-rays done on the stone show that it has a weird, opaque internal structure. He's convinced that this thing is from an advanced ancient civilization, or from an extraterrestrial race, aka aliens. Like, I'm not gonna lie but it's pretty weird, so just saying. Coming in at number six, we have the Baghdad battery. Here is yet another example of how our ancestors absolutely soared past our expectations of them. We thought electricity was just a modern thing. A 2000 year old battery discovered by Wilhelm Koenig in 1940. It was uncovered during a dig of an ancient village near Baghdad and set the minds of archeologists Spinning. It is a 5.5 inch high clay vessel with a copper cylinder inside and an oxidized iron rod suspended within the cylinder, not touching the sides, and the two entrances are closed off by asphalt plugs. It is suspected that this makeshift battery served as a way of electroplating gold onto silver, only needing to be filled with some kind of acid like wine or vinegar in order to work. Today, some researchers believe that it was actually just a storage container, but that's not true. Come on. But replicas created by American electrical researcher Willard Gray after World War II actually produced around two volts of electricity. I love discoveries like this because it tells us just how ahead of the game we were and gave a delicious dose of foreshadowing at where we are heading as a civilization. At number five are the Nazca Lines. These massive drawings sp sprawling across the Peruvian desert are seriously something else. They've been around for more than 1500 years. Just imagine back when there were no smartphones or drones, these ancient folks managed to create giant images that you could only fully appreciate from up in the sky. Now the variety of these drawings, the animals, the shapes, and the designs are so precise it's hard to believe that they were made without some kind of aerial guidance. Some folks think that they represent constellations or maybe a sort of homage to gods, but the mystery here is still unsolved. In 2022, archaeologists stumbled upon 150 new Nazca lines. I mean, you'd think after all these years with Google Earth and, si and satellites and whatnot, we'd at least found them all by now. But no, these discoveries just keep adding more questions. At number four is the Iron Pillar of Delhi. This thing has perplexed experts for ages. I mean, we're talking about an iron column that has stood tall for at least 1,500 years. Some even speculate that it might be older than that. And here's the kicker. Despite all those years, it's rust-free. Now let's get into the nitty gritty. This pillar is 99.72% pure iron. It's impressive by today's standards even. I'm talking about a level of purity that even modern experts struggle to achieve. They've tried to replicate it and they can't crack the code. And get this, and they can't crack the code as even our iron is only like 99.8% pure iron, which is like 0.8% more, which is crazy. But what's even crazier is that it doesn't have any of the usual suspects found in modern high-grade iron like manganese and sulfur. It's just a pure iron anomaly. The grave Naki sews of an enthroned woman with an attendant from 100 BC. This stone carving from over 2000 years ago depicts a strange sight. A kid holding what looks like a laptop in front of a person seated on a throne. The artwork, chilling at the Getty Villa in Los Angeles, got some folks scratching their heads. The museum even claims this box is a container, yet one that's far too shallow to hold anything big. Now some say it's a jewelry box or a makeup box, comparing it to other stuff that... Now some say it's a jewelry or a makeup box, but what if it's not? Imagine if the folks who built the... Pe Imagine if the folks who sculpted this used high-tech software like, Auto uh, like AutoCAD on their MacBook which sounds pretty bonkers. This artifact seems to raise eyebrows because it's familiar to our tech, but it's from way, way back. And number two is the 2000 year old batteries. Imagine stumbling upon a set of ancient jars, which would be pretty cool on its own, but these aren't just any old jars, mind you. They're like the ancestors of modern day batteries. Picture clay jars decked out with asphalt stoppers and iron rods, kicking it, um, all the, kicking it from all the way back from 2000 years ago. This convites consists of a clay vessel, inside which is a copper cylinder held in place by asphalt. And within the cylinder, archaeologists found an oxidized iron rod. So back in 1938, this German archaeologist named William, named Willem Koenig suggested that these could be galvanic cells, perhaps used for electroplating gold onto silver objects. Nobody could prove the do wrong, especially since all you need was to fill it with acid or alkaline all, uh, considering all you needed to do was fill it with an acid or an alkaline substance to produce an electric charge. These jars, let's call them ancient batteries, can actually whip up more electricity than you'd expect, turning out 
just over a volt, which is pretty shocking, pun intended. Now, the battery wouldn't have been a very effective one, but still, ancient batteries. At number one, let's dive into these ancient paintings. First is the Madonna with Saint Giovanni. This painting is famous for having a blob-like thing in the sky. I mean, we have Mary, baby Jesus, Saint John just chilling in a classic 15th century scene, but where is that disc-shaped blob to the right of Mary? It's got a guy and a dog staring at it. Some peeps speculate that this might be more than just the holy family going on here. Some think that those beings might be from outer space. Imagine that, extraterrestrials photobombing photo a centuries old painting. Now this other painting, the inoculation with Saint Emidius, is a whole different story. This masterpiece illustrates the Gabriel angel giving Mary the heads up about baby Jesus. But hold up, in this painting it appears like Mary's receiving the news from a beam of light coming from a strange otherworldly object. Uh, some folks got way out there suggesting that Mary might have had an otherworldly encounter leading to her pregnancy with Jesus. So was Christ an alien? Probably. Coming in number 10, we have the Antikythera Mechanism. Mapping out the stars is something that many civilizations have done throughout history. I mean, it's pretty hard not to be blown away by what is floating around above you in this massive net of lights and endless void of blackness, but it was more than this. The stars could be used to map out directions so you could know where you're going in the dead of night when the sun wasn't being kind enough to show you which direction you needed to head in. The Antikythera Mechanism was maybe the most advanced form of mapping out the stars we have ever seen from ancient civilizations. There's a a series of gears and systems almost like a massive clock. It has two sides that were most likely used for mapping out different things. But the wild thing about this archaeological find is that to this day we don't know exactly what it was used for. The thing is just too complex. I wonder what type of thing that we have today that no one will be able to find out what it was used for in the future. Is it going to be Heelys or something? Like why did they want wheels on their shoes? Was it for speed? Was it for fashion? Turns out it's for both baby. Gotta go fast. Gotta look good. If that isn't a slogan already it should be. Coming in at number 9, we have the Piri's Res map. I think one of the coolest and worst jobs you could have had back in the day would have been an explorer. I mean, you could go and find a new land and literally become famous because of your discoveries. You could get knighted and everyone in the world would want to hear your stories about traveling across the globe to see some of the most exotic things the world has to offer. But at the same time, you would have to spend months at a time on a boat with only dudes and then you might end up in a place that is so insanely cold you lose some of your fingers and toes or you could be in a jungly area that has a tiger that is trying to kill you and you have literally never seen a tiger before in your life but for Piri Rez things seemed to work out all right the dude was from Hungary and it seemed that he had such a great understanding of the world that people thought he could have come from the future the dude had a map that broke down the location of Antarctica 200 years before it was officially discovered and disclosed to the world this means that this man had a better understanding of the world than anyone around him. There's also the fact that he mapped out missing continents that have disappeared. I would love a new continent. I really just want a new culture of people so I can try a new food that I didn't even know existed. It's the main reason I want aliens to be real, so they can come here and give me food. Coming in at number eight, we have the Hindu bell. Answer this question. How did an old brass bell that looks like it has some carvings in it that look like a Hindu god end up in a mine in West Virginia encased in a lump of coal that was 300 million years years old, huh? How? You tell me how. I don't know. I don't know how. Was it because the future people came back to leave a bell for some other people? Did some people cross the Atlantic way before we think? Or was the whole thing a hoax? Well, I don't know, dude. Let me know in the comments what you think. Coming in at number seven, we have the Dendera lights. There might have been light bulbs that were discovered in ancient Egypt. Yeah, everyone likes to jump on the bad wagon of Thomas Edison when we talk about the person who brought light to homes. But he really was just a con man who had an eye for a good patent and killed a prisoner in one of the most brutal executions ever because his ego was too big to let Nikola Tesla have the better version of technology. But when we start to flow back through time, we find that the Egyptians used to worship something called the Dendera lights. It would seem that hieroglyphs in the Hafar temple would show that the Egyptians used to be able to harness the power of glowing lights and they might have used it to party. How could they have done something like this? Well, no one knows and the marking 
markings might have just been art, but it could have been tech that was brought to them from the future. Might have been alien tech since ancient Egyptians are always associated with aliens. Coming in at number six, we have the underwater pyramid. There has been so much footage of strange things flying around in the air that it shocks me that we haven't been introduced to even one alien yet. Honestly, I hope that it happens in my lifetime because this pandemic has just been such a drag. We need something to spice things up, but maybe we haven't been able to run into any space dudes because they have all been underwater. There are some people who think that all the aliens who come to visit come to a secret underwater base, and that's why we don't see them. And this pyramid that was found in Yonaguni, Japan might be hints to this. Now, at first glance, the people who came to look at it said that it's just a normal rock formation, nothing special about it. But then some people said that they found a massive knife down there. And then some other people said that knife was a fake and had nothing to do with a massive underwater pyramid. Then some people stated that there was art carved into the side of this pyramid, which hasn't been disproven yet. Okay, but it still could be. There are theories floating around that this could be connected to Atlantis or that it could be a hotspot for alien visitors who brought some tech from the future to make a home base just outside of Japan. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the witch bottles. Back in 2019, contractors were demolishing the chimney of a pub and inn in England when they came across something frightening. Inside the chimney were bottles containing things such as fish hooks, human teeth, and urine. But this isn't actually that weird of a find. In the 15th, 16th, and 17th century, people kept these in their home. They were referred to as witch bottles and were meant to keep witches away. Some of the bottles had fingernails and hair in them, and those were meant to act like charms to ward them away. But they were most commonly filled with pins, thorns, and urine. Apparently, the urine attracted the witches to the bottle, and then they would be trapped on the pins. These bottles have been found in churchyards, old buildings, and riverbanks all across Great Britain. I mean, I think that would be a pretty cool discovery if you found that in your house, just minus the jars of urine. Coming in at number four, we have a 250,000 year old aluminum wedge. Aluminum, a material found in every kitchen for barbecue or you know, just like cooking in general. It's one of the most commonplace materials found on earth, making up approximately 8.2% of the earth's crust. However, we as humans only figured out how to extract it in the 1800s, taking even longer to figure out how to make it cost effective to do so. So when researchers found a five pound crafted aluminum object in Romania, buried next to 10,000 year old Macedon bones, they had some questions. The object has clearly been crafted by someone for some purpose and is a combination of several materials, aluminum making up 89% of that. The aluminum wedge has been theorized to have been everything from a tool to a landing foot of perhaps an extraterrestrial ship. This object also feeds into the theory that there was a far advanced human civilization that existed long before us that was wiped out. This isn't the first time we've talked about aliens and forgotten civilizations and honestly, the more videos we make, I'm getting swept away by the possibilities because how like nuts would that be? Anyways, whatever it was used for or whomever it used to belong to remains a mystery and leaves more questions than answers behind. In our third spot, we have the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone was discovered in 1799 and is a broken off section of a bigger stone slab. On it, it contains messages written in three different types of scripts ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, demotic scripts, and ancient Greek. This stone is said to be the key to decipher Egyptian scripts. The stone was discovered by soldiers belonging to Napoleon Bonaparte's army. In July of 1799, they were digging around and found it near the town of Rashid, and it was built into an old wall. In 1814, British scientist Thomas Young started studying the stone and made some progress with cracking it. But it wasn't until 1822 to 1824 that the hieroglyphic code was cracked. This was done by French linguist Jean-Francois Champollion. It's hypothesized that the slab was created in Egypt in 196 BC, but we still don't know who created it, and honestly, why? Some say it holds the key to be able to communicate with aliens, and that it actually came from space. At this point, who knows? Then we just seem like we love aliens. Aliens! Coming in at number two, we have the Nazca Lines. Despite years of research, the Nazca Lines still don't make sense. For those of you who haven't heard, the Nazca Lines are massive geoglyphs that can even be seen from space. In fact, they can only be seen fully from the sky. Located 250 miles south of Lima, Peru, created by the Nazca people, there are over 70 precise depictions of animals, including spiders and hummingbirds, plus an image of a decapitation and a large humanoid figure known as the astronaut. Hmm. 
guys, come on, aliens. Some of the designs from the geoglyphs measure around 30 miles, and experts have no idea how or why these drawings were created with such precision. After all, humans lack the tools to build such incredible designs. Or did they? It really makes you wonder what abilities or perhaps extraterrestrial intelligence was available to the Nazca people that we can't comprehend today. And in our number one spot, we have the Shroud of Turin, otherwise known as the Holy Shroud. This is a piece of linen that is said to have been wrapped around Jesus during his burial. What's fascinating is how this piece of linen cloth appears to have a facial outline of Jesus' face. Of course, over the years, there have been disputes to whether or not this is authentic. But in the 1970s, it was discovered that the markings on the cloth were consistent with a crucified body, and that the blood stains on it were from real human blood. But others argue that the shroud doesn't come from the right time period as Jesus. And in 2018, a team of researchers claimed that the blood stains couldn't have come from him. Either way, it acts kind of like a symbol for the story of Christ. If it's not real, then someone please explain to me the whole face and body print that I see on it, because I'm genuinely curious. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have a throwing spear. A throwing spear that was approximately crafted over 10,300 years ago was discovered by Dr. Craig Lee from Montana State University in 2007. It was discovered in northern Wyoming. 10,300 years ago, holy moly. Just saying that is so trippy and hard to wrap my brain around the idea of people existing at that point. But in any case, this spear at first glance appeared just like a stick. But then after closer inspection, he discovered that it was a dart from a throwing spear. At this point, it is the oldest frozen artifact found yet. It's been a source of inspiration for others to continue the hunt for artifacts that are being revealed as a result of melting ice patches, and it certainly has created a sense of urgency for people to get hunting for these unbelievable items. In our number 9 spot we have the Yukon Treasures. A size 4 moccasin shoe from 1400 years ago was found melting in the Yukon, and my inner shopaholic is super excited about it. So of course I had to include it on this list. Along with this shoe, two other items were found. A barbed antler projectile point from about 1200 years ago, and throwing darts from 9,000 years ago. Apparently they were found by a husband and wife in 1997 who were hunting doll sheep in the Yukon Mountains when they smelled something extremely strange. It was dung, yes, poop, from a caribou. But the thing is, caribou hadn't been in this area for many, many years. Years, so they decided to inspect it. <laughs> Naturally? <laughs> I wouldn't. Anyways, I guess they discovered that the poop was from thousands of years ago that had frozen into ice and close behind it were these artifacts that had melted along with it. Pretty wild. In our number 8 spot we have animal hair rope. While out exploring the mountaintops of western Mongolia, archaeologist and researcher Isaac Hart of the University of Utah discovered something quite interesting that he felt would truly help with discovering more about the Mongolia people in ancient times. They discovered a finely woven piece of animal hair rope. This rope was first thought to have been dropped in the ice recently, however after scientists performed some radiocarbon tests on it to see how old it was, it was proven to be more than 1,500 years old. Wow, that's some old rope. In our number seven spot, we have horn curls. On this same trip, looking for more artifacts, Isaac Hart found some Argali sheep skulls and horn curls from 1,500 years ago, which were stacked in a pile by ancient hunters. And this finding completely discounted some old assumptions about the Mongolian people in the past. They were long thought to be herding societies, but these findings show that perhaps they were big hunters on mountain ice. Wow, sometimes just talking about this just makes me feel super grateful to be alive today. Although we are all wimps now, just going outside when it's cold, you know, I'm already looking for the outdoor heater. Where's the outdoor heater? <laughs> What are we in ancient times? Coming in at number five, we have the Nazca Lines. Oh, don't think that we're off the idea of aliens coming to Earth just yet. I mean, we're doing a list of artifacts from the future. There's going to be a lot of alien talk on this one. The Nazca Lines might be one of the oldest and strangest discoveries in the area. They went unnoticed for thousands of years until the 1930s. This is mainly because you can only see them from the sky. They are massive lines that are seen running through the ground. They are made in a pretty primitive way by just moving the Earth, 
which is traditionally red to showcase the white earth underneath. Now that doesn't seem like it came from the future at all. Well, this is where the future thing comes in. These lines were made over 2000 years ago. And the question is, why did they make them? Some people think that this could have been a way to communicate with aliens or beings from the future. Other people think that this could have just been rituals to send a message to a god in order to have a good year of crops. Mind you, those gods might have been aliens from the future. Next on the list, we have the Archilocori axe. I mean, this is really just an axe. What's so special about it? I could go buy an axe right now and it would do the same thing that it did thousands of years ago. It would chop. Well, unless you have a TikTok that's dedicated to chopping wood, then the axe is used to chop wood and rev a woman's libido. But what has put this axe on this list is the fact that it was made over 4,000 years ago and it has a ton of strange markings in it all over it and no one has been able to decipher them. There are 15 different symbols on it, which is very strange for this kind of tool. It would have just been used to chop wood. Why did someone put so much work into making it look nice? There's also the fact that the axe is very advanced for its era. Maybe the person who made it had knowledge from the future, or maybe they were just the best axe maker of their time and decided to deck out their axe with a bunch of cool drawings. Like, you know, if you're making a table for yourself today, you're gonna make the thing custom and cool as hell. Next, we have the Lunar Tact Disc. How did the Vikings become one of the most dominant warriors of their time? Was it weaponry? Was it the lack of empathy? Was it the way they would dress? Well, it might have been all of those things combined with the Lunar Tact Disc. This thing was basically the most advanced compass of its day. The thing could tell the Vikings how to cross vast oceans, which was a key part in how they were able to be such a dominant force. They would be able to venture away far away from their homes and then pull up on some people and just start hacking and slashing. They could cut everyone's head off and really go to town on the whole area. They would take some prisoners. They would burn things to the ground. You didn't want to be on the receiving end of a Viking axe. But the way they were able to make these long ocean voyages without the fear of getting lost was through the lunar tack disc. This thing was the most advanced compass of its day, and it could even work at night. This thing was able to somehow cast light onto the compass that would be similar to using a sundial during the day. Apparently, it used magic crystals. These crystals might have come from the future. We have no idea really how they worked because we've never found one. Next on the list, we have the Baghdad battery. When was the first battery ever made? When did we figure out how to lock down the power of electricity and put it into a little area so that it could be used for Xbox controllers? Do those things still take batteries or do they have rechargeable batteries now? For how long have we been seeing people control the power of lightning in a Duracell? Well, it turns out that we might have been able to do this for longer than you think. The Baghdad battery was discovered back in 1938 and trust me, it was turning some heads. It had a copper rod inside of it and what some people are saying is electroplating. If this is is true, that means that people back then were able to harness some juice into a clay pot. If this is possible, that means I could set up some clay pots in my home and charge my phone like that. I could get off the grid with a little bit of clay and copper. I like the sound of that. All right, next on the list, guys, we have the London Hammer. Okay, this is for sure the craziest one. Mind you, I know nothing about geology, so this might be normal, but the internet seems to think that this is a big deal, and who am I to deny them? The London Hammer seems to be a regular relic, some old hammer that a blacksmith probably used to make some tools and weapons. I mean, there is really nothing cool about that, and it definitely didn't come from the future, but then you find out that the hammer was found in some limestone that is 400 million years old. What does that mean? I don't really know. Does limestone that old just hang around and anything can get stuck in it? Or is it something that can only happen if the hammer got launched into it at the time? I have no clue, man, but some people seem to think that something spectacular happened here because people are constantly talking about how this is completely unexplained. 